conformations are different three-dimensional positions for the same molecule. And so here I have the, the wedge and dash drawing for ethane, which is one way to represent this molecule in three dimensions. And here I have two conformations of the ethane molecule. You can see they're both ethane, but they're different three-dimensional positions. So let's first talk about how, how to go from a wedge and dash drawing to what's called a sawhorse projection. So these guys are called sawhorse projections down here. So let me go ahead and write that. This would represent, these two down here represent sawhorse projections. And if you've ever been to a construction site and seen all the sawhorses they work with, this drawing on the right looks a lot like one of those sawhorses. So, so that's a sawhorse projection. Well, if I look here at this carbon, so I'm saying the sawhorse projection on the right, that carbon is this carbon. And if I think about this hydrogen as being up and to the right, I can see that it's up and to the right over here. Uh, this hydrogen is up and to the left, up and to the left, and then this hydrogen is going straight down. So if you turn this molecule a little bit, <clears throat> that is what you would see. And if you don't already have a molecular model set, this is definitely the time to get one and do it in three dimensions right in front of you. So when, when I go back to this second carbon right here, obviously that is this one, and I have a hydrogen that is going up, so there's my hydrogen going up. I have a hydrogen going, going out into to the right, so that's out and to the right, and then I have a hydrogen going going down and to the left. So this is going down and to the left like that. All right, so uh, this is a sawhorse projection on the left. How does it get to be the sawhorse projection on the right? Well, remember this is a this is a sigma bond between my two carbons, so free rotation is possible. So if I keep the back carbon stable still, and I rotate this sigma bond, I rotate this front carbon, I'm going to rotate it so these hydrogens end up in this position on the right. So you can rotate either the, either the back carbon or the front carbon depending on what you want to do. So that's how you can interconvert between these two conformations. And so there's, a, there's literally, you know, a, an amazing amount of different conformations, right? You could have any, any tiny little turn of that sigma bond would represent, would represent a different conformation. Sort of like, sort of like you when you're walking around and, 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 you're, and you're moving your arms, every little tiny movement of your arms would be a different conformation of you. And obviously you have different conformations. You can stand, you can sit, you can lie down. Some conformations are more comfortable than others, and that's why we study them. There's another way to represent ethane in three dimensions, and uh, that method is called a Newman projection. So let's see if we can figure out how to draw a Newman projection for ethane. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eye, so here is my eye, a little drawing of my eye, and I'm going to stare down this carbon-carbon bond, like that. So I'm going to stare down that carbon-carbon bond. I'm going to draw what I see. Again, this is much easier if you have a, if, if you have a, a model set in front of you here. So, so let's draw down that carbon. And, and the front carbon, this one right here, is going to be represented with a dot. So that's my front carbon, like that. And then I have this Y shape of hydrogens coming out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my Y shape of hydrogens like that. And I'm going to go ahead and make those my red hydrogens. So that's what I would see if I, if I stare down that carbon-carbon axis. It's very hard for me to see this back carbon, right? This, this back carbon right here is very difficult to see because this front carbon is in the way. So the way to represent that back carbon in a Newman projection is to draw a circle like that. And again, if I'm staring down this axis right here, right, this, this blue hydrogen on top is going to appear in between the two red hydrogens. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that, that top blue hydrogen right here. It's going to show up in between those two blue hydrogens. It's going to go straight up. And this, this blue hydrogen over here on the right, it's going down and to the right. So it's going to go down and to the right like that. So that's going to end up between, between those hydrogens as well. So let's go ahead and draw on that hydrogen. And then, of course, my last hydrogen, this one over here, is down and to the left. So if I go ahead and put in my, my last hydrogen, it is down and to the left like that. So that is a, a Newman projection uh, for one conformation of ethane. And Let's go ahead and, and draw our, our little double-headed arrows here because we know that this Newman projection um, can interconvert, right? So uh, let's go ahead and look at our, our, second, our second sawhorse projection. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to stare down 
this axis, right? So if I put my eye right here, I'm going to stare down that carbon carbon axis. So what will I see to turn that into a Newman projection? Well, uh, this time I see like an upside down Y at my front, at my front carbon, right? So those would be my red hydrogens. So let me go ahead and put in my red hydrogens right there. And if I stare down that bond, right? So I'll go ahead and put in my, my back carbon. Um, I can see that everything's kind of lining up, right? These hydrogens are in line, right? These hydrogens are in line. These hydrogens are in line. So it's kind of like the, the back carbon will have an, uh, have an upside down Y shape too. So it's kind of tricky to draw, but let me go ahead and, and attempt to put in my, my upside down Y in the back here. And it's very difficult because the, the front hydrogens get in the way. The front hydrogens eclipse the back hydrogens and the bonds eclipse each other too. So this is actually called the eclipsed uh, new, the, the eclipse conformation of ethane. So let's go ahead and write that. This is the eclipse conformation of ethane drawn as a Newman projection. And this is called the staggered conformation of ethane drawn as a Newman projection. And because of the free sigma bond rotation, uh, the staggered conformation on the left can easily rotate uh, to give you the eclipse conformation on the right. Let's think about the stability of these two conformations. And let's focus in on the angle between these hydrogens here. So if I think about what that angle must be, well, I have six equivalent angles all the way around, and a circle is 360 degrees. So 360 divided by 6 would give me 60 degrees. So this angle here is 60 degrees. We call that angle the, the torsional angle torsional angle or the dihedral angle, right? So same thing. So torsional or dihedral angle, which can vary from 0 to 180 degrees, if you think about it. And if I look at what the torsional or dihedral angle is for the eclipse conformation, well, there really isn't an angle, because these two guys are eclipsing each other. So the angle is, is 0 degrees over here on the right side. And if I think about which of these two conformations is the most stable, uh, it's much better to stagger your hydrogens. And there are a couple ways to think about that. One way would be, well, the electrons in, in this bond right, are repelling the electrons in these bonds. So they, they don't like to be that close together. They like to be as far away from each other as they possibly can. And there's a little bit of steric hindrance con contributed by these two hydrogen atoms as well, but mostly it's the electrons in those bonds. And there is some, there are some quantum mechanics principles in here which we don't have time to go into. So uh, for all of those reasons, the eclipse conformation is less stable than the staggered conformation. Okay, so the staggered conformation is actually the the most stable, so most stable of these two conformations. So most stable, the eclipse is the least stable. And we can actually quantify that using some numbers so we can calculate the potential energy. So real quickly, let's, let's review what potential energy is from physics. If I'm holding a ball, right, so here's, here's a ball, and, and then here's my hand holding a ball um, above the ground. And so here's my ground right here. The ball has some potential energy as a result of its position above the ground. So if you set the ground equal to zero potential energy or, or you know, low potential energy, let's, let's say it's zero. And then let's say by holding the ball a certain height above the ground, I get, I get a value of 12 kilojoules of potential energy. When I release that ball, obviously it's going to fall to the ground, and that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So the ball is going to move from higher potential energy to lower potential energy. Let's think about the interactions of these hydrogens. Well, these hydrogens um, interacting, and, and actually I should say the electrons interacting, are going to destabilize this molecule. And the calculations show that each, each of these interactions is about 4 kilojoules per mole of what we call torsional strain. So this is torsional strain here. When you, with your torsion angle equal to 0 degrees, you're going to get some strain due to the eclipsing of those bonds. So 4 kilojoules of torsional strain, and I have three interactions, right? Three interactions where I get 4 kilojoules per mole. So I get a total of 12 kilojoules per mole. Um, 
higher potential energy for the eclipse conformation compared to the staggered conformation. So you could think about it, if you were holding the eclipse conformation, if you were holding it yourself and forcing it to stay in the eclipse conformation, and you let go, and the electrons in these bonds repel, then it's going to go to the staggered conformation, which is much lower in terms of potential energy. So the higher energy conformation is the least stable. The lower energy conformation is the most stable. And uh, most of the time, ethane will spend in the staggered conformation. So about 99% of the time, you're going to get the staggered conformation. And about 1% of the time, you're going to get the eclipse conformation. But it's always interconverting back and forth between those. Let's draw one more, one more example. Let's do propane. So let's go ahead and, and look at the dot structure for propane. So there are my carbons. And then I have to put in some hydrogens here, because I'm going to be drawing uh, Newman projections. So let's go ahead and put in our hydrogens, what they would have to look like like that. Now, let's say you're staring down the carbon 1, 2 bonds. You're staring down this bond right here, so like that. So your eye is going to go, your eye is going to go right, right here. So let me go ahead and put my eye showing right, right about here on my axis, so here is my eye. I'm going to stare down that bond. So what will I see when I do that? Well, the first carbon I represent with a dot like that. And I have a hydrogen going up. So hydrogen going up. So that's, that's this hydrogen right here. That's this hydrogen going up. I have a hydrogen going down and to the right, and that's this hydrogen. So let me go ahead and represent hydrogen going down and to the right. And then I have a hydrogen going down and to the left over here. So a hydrogen going down and to the left over here like that. All right, so that takes, care of, that takes care of my first carbon right here. I go to my next carbon right here. I have to represent that with a circle. So I go ahead and put a circle behind it like that. And then, let's see, where are my hydrogens? Well, I have a hydrogen going up and to the right. So I'll go ahead and put this in blue, a hydrogen going up and to the right. I have a hydrogen going up and to the left hydrogen going up and to the left. And then I have a methyl group going down. So I have a methyl group going down like that. So that would be the staggered conformation for propane when you cite down the carbon 1-2 bond. We know that this can interconvert between different conformations. So if I were to rotate, um, I'm going to rotate the front carbon to get the eclipsed conformation of this molecule. So I'm going to rotate the front carbon. I'm going to say I'm going to take I'm going to take this hydrogen right here and I'm going to rotate it um, 60 degrees over there to the right. So if I rotate that front hydrogen, now when I'm drawing my Newman projection, I'm going to have a Y shape. So I'm going to have a Y shape because I rotated. I rotated the hydrogen over there to the right, so I get a Y shape like that for my front carbon. And then we'll go ahead and draw my back carbon. The back carbon was already in a Y shape, so I can go ahead and put in the hydrogen in the back, which did not move. This hydrogen did not move, and then the methyl group did not move. So I might have something that looks like that for the eclipsed, for, for the eclipsed <clears throat> Newman projection. So if I think about the stability of these two conformations, um, I already know the staggered version is going to be the most stable. But let's go ahead and quantify it mathematically very fast. So I, I already know that these two hydrogens interacting are going to give me some torsional strain, 4 kilojoules per mole of torsional strain. So I have two of those. I have two of those interactions. And here I have a, a methyl group interacting with that hydrogen. And since the methyl group is bigger, I'm going to get even more torsional strain. So I'm going to get I'm I'm going to get about 6 kilojoules per mole for that interaction. So the total torsional strain for the molecule on the right compared to the left, well, that would be 14, of course. So 14 kilojoules per mole is my total torsional strain. So the molecule on the right has a higher potential energy than the molecule on the left, which destabilizes it. So once again, my, my staggered conformation over here on the left is the most stable. So that's how to draw Newman projections. We're going to get into more complicated Newman projections in the next few videos.